then is growing among the breeding roots. Then meanwhile, as the fresh mud banks are being built up severely, you know, the flooding activity is bringing fresh sand. The red mangrove community moves over outwards, colonizing them. So the red, uh, the deposit of fresh seal, seal shield still continues with the, in the area of the red mangrove. Then the banks are raised with accumulation of plants and animal remains. While mangrove gradually, while the white, the white mangrove gradually gives place to a more open association of semi-mangrove species through mixed association. Now, there is association between the mangrove now with the trees, shrubs, herbs, grasses, ferns, and epiphytes. As the humus continues to accumulate the semi-mangrove association, they become replaced by normal forest flora. You know, from the red mangrove, we have the white mangrove, then it is being replaced by normal forest flora, which is regarded as the climate association. Now, the first set of animals that settle on the mangrove swamp include creeping animals such as worms, slugs, snails, flying insects, and birds. So th those are the first inhabitant animals that we have in that place. Then in the white, the white mangrove, the animals such as squirrels, rats, snakes, monkeys, and other small carnivorous animals can be found, then maybe later when the cover, the cover is dense enough, you can have hippopotamus and forest animal, uh, elephants in the white mangrove. So it's talking about various activities that happen following each other in the mangrove forest. So that is an example of primary succession. Now I want to talk about an example of secondary succession. And the typology of using is the abandoned farmland. There are stages in the, develop, the, stages in the development of plants and animals on an abandoned farmland. This is what I'm going to outline for you. The ground of the abandoned farmland contains nutrient remains from the destruction of the old farm. You know, this is talking about, it's not a fresh ground like we have in the mango forest. It's a place that has been used before, some people have inhabited or even some animals, some plants have been there before, but one thing led to the other, it was burnt down, maybe there was war, there was something that happened and the place could no longer be in use, it was abandoned for a while. So that particular land still has nutrients, remains from the old farm. The animals that have been there, the remains of the plants and things like that are still inherent in the soil. Then the first settlers on that land, that is the initial settlers, include eggs, larvae, worms of insects, then seeds of plants. That will now be followed by the development of underground stems. You know, maybe the place was used as a farmland before and there were some crops that were harvested. You know, somehow, somehow, some seeds will drop. You have droppings of seed in the soil. So, it will not be so it will not be empty, even though it was one, but there are some things that will still remain in the land. That's the first stage. Now, the second stage in the abandoned farmland, that's the typology of our secondary succession, involves the germination and the growth of the grasses. You know, those seeds, the seed of the grasses that were there, of the crops that could still survive the ashes, they begin to germinate. Then the larvae of the eggs that were there, the larvae and the eggs of insects begin to metamorphosize and they are ashed into insects. Then next to this are the vegetation of weedy herbaceous plants, which as annuals now support more animals such as rats, squirrels, as well as other rodents like snakes and reptiles. The herbs now, you know, following the seed germination, you have the herbaceous plant growing. Later, the herbs are displayed by shrubs at the third stage with increases in diversities, diversity of species. Then, leading us to the fourth stage, we have more trees growing with diversity of species, and then we now have birds, you know, birds will be on the trees, monkeys, snakes, reptiles, living in different strata, that is, different levels in the habitat. Then the population and activity of the detritus feeders, that is, organisms that feed on organic debris from the composition of plants and animals, and they can also be termed as saprophytes because they feed on dead uh, decomposition of plants and animals. So they increase, their activities increase 
on the land and the climax of the vegetation is reached. The animal community now involves or includes herbivores, wild carnivores, and difficult feeders that sacrifice are involved in complex food web. So that's just a description of the secondary succession and abandoned family life is our example. Now we want to look at the characteristics of succession. The first settlers in any succession are the green plants, organisms that you find at the base of the food web or the trophic level are green plants, they are autotrophs. So also in succession, they are in ecological succession, they are the first settlers. Plants are the first settlers. Then they are now replaced by annuals, herbaceous plants, then followed by mist, we have shrubs, then later by trees. Also, succession progresses in a definite, predictable sequence. One thing leading to the other, we have apps first, then followed by shrubs, then by trees, you have insects first, followed by rodents, then you have birds, you have bigger animals like antelopes, like hortemors, like elephants. So, it's in progressive form. Then succession, succession involves changes in form and type as well as the number of organisms in relation to time. You know, reproduction will happen, then they begin to increase, they change shape because of the peculiarity of their environment, they change their form, they increase the number. So it involves changes. There will be increase, there will be changes in, so as to adapt to their particular environment. Another characteristic is that there is competition for food in succession. Competition for food, for oxygen, for water, for carbon dioxide, for space, for light, among various species. So various species will compete for space, they compete for food, they compete for oxygen, compete for light, compete for everything. So it is usually the survivor of the fittest. That is, they keep to striving for space, for all those things. So, is the, is the organism that can withstand the competition that will last. The organism that is always weak will soon be get, gotten rid of because it will not get enough of those things and eventually it will lead to its death. Then each generation of species change the habitat by adding more soil and making it more fertile as well as shading other species. Also, there is, the, there is increase in the number of organisms from time to time until the climax is reached, since they are reproducing, there will be increase from time to time till the climax is reached. Then the diversity of species of organism increases until a climax community is attained. And the climax is usually when the community is stable and cannot accommodate any other than just the balance. That's the highest level of development that can occur in that area. Now, still talking about ecology of population, we move on to talk about competition. I said competition is a characteristic of the of succession. So we want to look in detail what competition is. Competition is the utilization of the same resources by one or more organisms of the same or different species living together in a community. When the resources such as food, light, space, water, shelter, mating partner, and so are in short supply to meet the need of all the organisms. When there is enough, enough of water, enough of food, enough of, enough of light, space, mating partners, there will be no need for competition because you just go there and take what you want and just leave. There is nobody disturbing the other. But when there is a shortage in these factors, in light, in oxygen, they will have to compete. For instance, when there is Water scarcity, or even fuel scarcity, let's use fuel scarcity as an example. When fuel is not available in the country and there are issues, you discover that people go to queue and they start fighting. Oh, I came first, I did. But when there is fuel normally, and you just find about two, three cars at the petrol station, you just enter, nobody is agitated, there is no, so there is no competition. But when there becomes a shortage in supply, then competition will arise. All these things in the population that is unable to compete successfully for these resources will die, leading to the reduction in size of the population. Because an organism cannot compete successfully, it becomes short of the necessary ingredients that it needs for its survival. So it will eventually lead to death, and eventually the population size will reduce. Then competition can be intraspecific or interspecific. Intraspecific means that 
the competition exists between individuals of the same species. They are the same species. For instance, insects of the same species, let's say grasshopper. They are both grasshoppers. So when grasshopper is competing between grasshopper, then you have intraspecific competition. E.g., you have tomato seedlings in a nursery. No? They are the same species. You just want tomato seedlings in a the nursery. They are competing for water, for life, for everything. So they are the same species. Then a population of laboratory rat cage also is they are the same species. Rats and those white rats that are being used in the lab for experiments. That's the laboratory rats that I'm talking about. So they are together in the same cage. They want to eat, they want to take water, they want air and things like that. So they are of the same species. So when competition exists between organisms of the same species, we say it is intraspecific competition. But when it exists between organisms of different species, that is interspecific competition. Intra between the same species, inter between organism of different species. For instance, Iroko tree, that is the Militia excelsa, and then Afara tree, that is Saminenia macroplera. In a forest, they are different species. They are even not of the same genus. Terminalia and Militia, they are different. But when they compete in the forest for light, you know, they are both tall, they compete for light, compete, so that is in that specific because they're not the same species, it's not Europa and Europa, and it's not Tamilania with another Tamilania. So that is inter specific competition, and they compete for life, the comp competition for grazing also. When you have competition for grazing land between a herd of cattle and a herd of antelope, you know they are different, cattle and antelope. So that is inter specific.